All right, so let's dive right into it. So injection discovery, okay? So when reviewing code, you can spot major injection risks by more of a linear approach, okay? And also more of a questioning inquiry or let's just call it the three questions approach. So with the linear approach, we've essentially been building off of this uh, throughout the series where you list execution context for a given piece of code and then for each execution context in that list, find syntactic and semantic injection risks. So that's great. Uh, and that has helped us kind of build a foundation. Uh, but uh, I, I've, within my own just like learning and just <laughs> pretty much everywhere in life, uh, it's just I, I feel it's really important to look at um, basically major items through different lenses. So some people find that more of a questioning approach uh, is more beneficial. So here is kind of looking at injection discovery through more of a questioning approach. So this is the three questions approach. So basically, you're asking yourself uh, while you're reviewing code, are there any injection risks that would allow remote code execution, right, or RCE. So we saw an example of this with syntactic injection within the shell context, okay? Or would allow sensitive data disclosure, okay? We saw an example of this with the semantic injection within the curl context, or SSRF. Now here is an item that we have not explored yet, and this is where it gets very interesting. So for example, <laughs> what about would anything allow my mitigations, right, uh, my injection mitigations, to be used against me, all right? Um, and this is usually found within the programming language's execution context. Uh, for example, uh, the JavaScript context. Uh, and, and so here's the thing. I mean, we've been... I, I've shown different uh, execution context and we are building up to the JavaScript context. I'm not going to show the JavaScript context within the old code. Uh, this is just going to be a new code example, uh, so we're not going to be looking at user-defined URL and the callback and whatnot. Uh, just to keep it fresh, uh, bringing in some new code here. Um, and also, this will be a natural, with this new code, this will be a natural transition uh, into mitigations, uh, which will be we will be covering into the future. <laughs> kind of some tongue twisters in this lecture, <laughs> so uh, bear with me, okay? All right, okay. So, all right, so let's do an assignment prep. Uh, so here's basically uh, the, the core code uh, that we're gonna be looking at. So a user basically uh, defines, uh, gives their, their email address, right? And we can see that, uh, we can imagine that coming into the application here. Obviously this is not an email address, uh, so this should fail uh, the validation. Anyhow, um, down below we have a whitelist regex uh, that is somewhat popular uh, in certain applications. And uh, yeah, we'll, we're gonna be hyper-focusing on this uh, regex, but it basically is validating for, for proper email emails, right? And then we basically are doing some timing items right here. Uh, you'll notice, you'll see the usefulness of this in a second. And then we basically, we take this regex uh, and we test uh, whatever uh, the user provides for user-defined email, and we just see if it's valid. And you can just see like a, just some, some pseudo code like logic down here. Okay, so what is the intent of this code? I've seen similar code like this in in in, uh, in applications, and the intent is usually, hey, let's mitigate these you know injection issues uh, by whitelisting uh, accepted characters, okay? And that characters are in this regex. Okay, so let's, for the sake of this assignment, let's assume that whitelist regex actually doesn't accept any malicious characters from user-defined email, okay? It's just, that that's a truth. <laughs> so, okay, so now, how else can user-defined email be exploited? So just kind of think about it for a sec, and then I'll give some hints. So here's the first hint. So what other string property should be validated, okay? and of, of essentially of user-defined email before it, it is sent into the regex. What other string property should be validated? And here's hint number two. Denial of service takes place when input is to what? To, <laughs> all right, uh, we'll, we'll answer it right here. 
So basically, denial of service takes place when input is too large. Okay, and whitelist regex, in in essence, is actually vulnerable to regular expression denial of service. And we're going to go ahead and learn regular expression denial of service, or what what I'm just going to be uh, saying is redos. Uh, we're going to be learning that by example. So let's get into that example. Okay, so you can go into this. You can find uh, this this code uh, right here uh, in the securing the stack repo, uh, the tutorials repo. And uh, so let's go ahead, and I already have it up. And basically, yep, I just did the the run command, and uh, you'll see the the shell over here on the right. So, what is assignment one? Okay, so set user uh, defined email to A, and note the time and then repeat with three A's. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this because this is actually the correct length for, uh, this is essentially the input uh, input that we start with for assignment two. So I'm just gonna copy that. And uh, so let's go ahead, so let's go down just to A right here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. Okay, so we're about, uh, hmm, about three, three and a half uh, milliseconds right here, okay. So then it says, uh, then we'll just go ahead uh, to three A's and we'll just go one at a time, right? So we see it actually kind of decreased there a little bit, uh, which is interesting. And then let's go ahead to about, oh, three. So it looks like it's actually decreasing in time. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, sweet. So now let's go ahead for assignment two and we'll do 18 A's which was what the original uh, kind of what the original uh, variable was set to or what this originally was excuse me so I'm gonna go ahead and save that so now we're about at about half a millisecond right here okay now let's just go up to 20 so 19 okay so it's now it's starting to increase okay and then let's go one more Oh wow, so it's about, so we, we, we hopped out from first we were about at half a millisecond and now we're about to one uh, second here. So, so basically uh, we can go into assignment three. Uh, given that, uh, basically I, I almost just kind of answered these, but uh, I, I, I think it's, it's a pretty, uh, it's a simplistic assignment, but uh, the, the ideas behind it are actually uh, very important. So assignment three is, is approximately how many characters should we allow in user-defined email? Okay, so let's go ahead for the answers here. So assignment one, the percentage increase seems trivial, right? Uh, so that we, we basically know. But, and it actually, uh, it actually was decreasing. So uh, yeah, <laughs> there's uh, nothing. It seemed trivial. Uh, it seemed initially like there was no issues. Then as basically as we increase those A's, we actually saw from 18 A's to 20 A's, as a percentage increase, the processing time drastically increased. So basically at 18 A to, to 20 A's, basically the processing time doubled essentially, uh, which is actually a big part in, in denial of service, right? Because uh, you can see what about at 25 A's, you know, it's gonna, is it gonna keep doubling? <laughs> Probably, and, and those uh, returns uh, can, can really, or those kind of increases uh, can start uh, really adding up really quick. And assignment three, okay, so we saw that we really, basically if you go through this and, and go 1A at a time, uh, you can kind of see that it really starts to pop up around 18As, okay? So we, uh, for, we would really be looking at limiting uh, that user-defined email to about 18 characters at a minimum. But it gets a little complicated because this is CPU dependent, right? Uh, because what works and what's kind of the benchmark on my CPU might not be the same as the server, et cetera. Um, and really the preferable solution is to restrict the email length to a same number, and you could just come up with that. And also leverage an input validation library, such as for JavaScript would be validate.js, right? And 
really the thought behind leveraging the input validation library is a lot of eyes are on that source code uh, and there is a, a lot uh, the probability of having a regular expression denial of service in a, in a highly leveraged input validation library is, is a lot lower uh, than say you know you just randomly going and picking a regular expression off of the internet uh, because certain ones uh, have certain patterns uh, that basically introduce a thing called catastrophic backtracking uh, that uh that make it susceptible uh, to to some of these uh, issues right that can basically hang the server and it's especially um, prevalent in node applications because it's single threaded right uh, so if you have a regular expression denial of service there it can block that event loop but Anyhow, um, if you want to learn more about, you know, spotting uh, vulnerable regular expressions, uh, that might be out of the scope for this tutorial. But uh, please leave me a comment, uh, and that is something that I can always go into into the future. Um, but anyhow, we're going to be kind of going into just items about mitigation uh, into future tutorials. So. Basically, what are some of the takeaways here, all right? Because uh, we went in kind of down a rabbit hole uh, with some of those assignments and whatnot. And the, the overarching theme is just regular expression or just redos uh, is a key risk within the programming languages ex execution context, right? So, and then when we're mitigating injection, we must validate inputs through a whitelist, okay? But also look for edge cases within that whitelist. In other words, if we're doing some validations, how could those really be leveraged against us, right? So we need to be looking at the length of the string that we're about to essentially uh, feed into our whitelist. So anyhow, please join me in the next steps uh, tutorial. Uh, really looking forward to it.